mount it over here. Good evening. I started a little early. As usual, I will uh, wait till other people come in. I don't want to anybody miss stuff. How are you this evening? That's not what I want. Oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, one's tired and one's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm missing a thing I have to pull up, but I think I got everything. Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. I think that's the only thing I need over there. Okay, let's see. Let's see who's here. I think it's just you guys so far. Give them a few more minutes. You know how they slowly roll in. I've been proactive this week. I'm getting a bunch of my swatches and samples ready in advance for next week. Because sometimes it's like the day of streaming. I'm finishing up a swatch like that afternoon. It's like, oh, i got to get this done before, before tonight. I've got... I'm prepared this week. So. Yeah, I can't do that until um Sunday into early Monday. Because since I'm entry level streamer, I have to do it each week. When you're affiliate, I think it's affiliate. I know it's partner, but I think maybe affiliate. You can fill out your schedule for the for an entire month. Yeah, I don't I don't have that unlocked yet. So I got to do that eat every beginning of each week. I got to go in and change everything, which most of it doesn't really. Well, I just have to change the day, and then some of the stuff doesn't really change. I got it. Okay. Okay, something just popped up over there. Get my pen and my pointer. Oh! I got to get the black paper for... The lighting and all. I don't like the way it crinkles. But it'll work. Lifting up my monitor, so give me a second. It might seem like we are having an earthquake. Just putting that down. Okay. Let's wait for the other usual stragglers. Like, where's Grammy and Cinderella? Because <laughs> Grammy's the one who asked about edges and borders, so... I don't want to... Hey, Cinderella, the Great Maryland Earthquake. <laughs> How are you, uh, Cinderella? Every time I see that name, I 
Oh. Hey, Grammy. Every time I see your name said under the Rella, I want to go Ella, Ella, Ella. That's it for the for the for the singing. I don't want to get a copyright strike. Okay. So before we start practicing, practice practice corner to corner. Good. Okay. Claim Eco and Grammy already saw this, but anybody new and. Nor Fairy and Cinderella haven't seen it. Yesterday afternoon, we made two trips to some uh, purveyors of the fleece. And I did get some more yarn for my temperature blanket. That's boring. We're not going to look at that. But I hit up the sale for Ollie's. And you're right, Cinderella. That location was picked over. And there's a lot of yarn barf. And what is up, up with this light blue, light baby blue um, red heart? And I saw somebody post online. They were in South Carolina. And their store had ton even more of this light baby blue red heart. I'm like, Jesus. Anyway. So I'm going to show you what I got. On the stalker feature that there were multiple stops. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we went to Ollie's, and I, what I got, I'm going to show you, I got at Ollie's. We went to Hobby Lobby. I didn't buy anything because they didn't have any sales, or they didn't have any sales signs. Went to Michael's, and then we went to a place in Annapolis called Knits and Pieces, and it was just so nice to look and see some really good, soft scrumptious squishy type yarn yeah that was fun didn't buy anything but still was fun to look okay so i'm gonna show you what i got i got four of yes yeah, scrumptious i got four of these red heart chic sheeps <laughs> you and that that blue bell well <laughs> Trap dollies. So I got four of these Red Heart Sheep Sheep. Sheep Sheep Sheep. In the color Dragon Fruit. And this is 100% wool. And oh, it's just. It's not super, super soft, but it's definitely soft. So I had I cleared them out of that color. They didn't have any more of that. And then I got 12. And I cleared them out of this. This is Red Heart Unforgettable. In the color Red Sea. This is 100% acrylic, I think. Where does it say? I thought it said acrylic. Yeah. And this is just so pretty and just... I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but... Got a big old box full. So I just wanted to share my... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. I didn't like a lot of the other stuff. I think... Clay Miko, I think you got some type of, like, cotton, like, kind of almost scrubby, but not scrubby. It has little hairs on it or whatever, so, like, for dishcloths and all. That, it, it was cool looking. I don't need any, any cotton. Yeah, for dishcloths, dish, dish towels, yeah. So, we're going to get into this. We are going, yeah, I've never had dragon fruit either. I gotta take my little. Yeah, but it's perfect for for dishcloths. Like you go to the the store and get cotton dishcloths. I mean, it's not something you're gonna call cuddle up with. Yeah, yes, we're take we're taste testing the yarn, and if she taste tests what what Clay Mako got, she's gonna get cotton mouth. Okay, so we're going to do the crap, our first border stitch of the evening. Oh, before I get into this, is everybody excited for Granny Week coming up? I know I am. <laughs> so, our first stitch that we're going to do tonight 
is the crab stitch, and this is edging, edgings and borders. So don't worry about the solid piece. This is just to say a, a blank done in double crochet. We're focusing on the edging tonight. And I don't know how well we're gonna be able to see. So this is what it's gonna what it looks like. It's is that stinky cheese? Hmm. So this is what it looks like. It kind of makes like a almost like looks almost like a whip stitch pattern. But it's really easy to do. It's a, if you need a real quick, simple border, this would be, go good on like a dishcloth. This would be a great border for a dishcloth. Okay, we want white background. Is that better? I know there's a shadow under my hands and everything, and I know it's... Okay, is that okay for everyone else? I know it's kind of distracting to see the shadow, but I can't do anything about the shadow. So, this would be a great border for a dishcloth, because you don't really want anything decorative and frilly on it. I mean, you, you could on a tea towel, but if you're going to use something to, to clean the dishes... So this is a real simple stitch, and you can do it in the same color that you're working it on, or do a different color here. Either way, if you're doing the same color that you're for your your main main body of the piece, all you're gonna do is you're gonna when you get to the end of the row, you're gonna chain one, and then start the row. If you're gonna do another another color. You're going to fasten off, and then you're going to join another. And the way to join the other, and I think I've showed this before, you're going to go into the work, loop your your new yarn over it, and bring it up, and then do your stitch. And then that tail, you can weave it in as you stitch, or you can let it let it go and then weave it in with a yarn needle later. So, but to do this, I'm gonna rip this out real quick, but I just wanted an example to show you to see what it's gonna look like, but this is real easy to put back in. This could be worked on any number of stitches. <laughs> so you don't have to have a certain multiple of stitches this can work on any number. So it's not like you have to have an even number or multiple six or whatever. So I'm gonna demonstrate again how to join. I'm just gonna go into whatever stitch, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, fa I fastened off here. I'm gonna go in right to the next one. And this, this stitch actually works backwards. So when we get to it, I'll show you how to do the edges because you know how the edges on double crochet are different than the rows. We'll get to that. So we're gonna put our hook in. We're just gonna insert our hook into a stitch and it doesn't matter what stitch you start on. It could be anywhere on the project. I would start on one of the actual stitches and not the sides, one of the ends on the row. And then you're just gonna loop over your, your yarn, over your hook, leave a little bit of a tail, and bring it up through. So you got your tail here and your working yarn there. Gonna hold them together. They're all coming through that one hole. You're going through the hole in the stitch, and you're just gonna pull a little tension on it. You're gonna drop the tail a bit, but you still want it snug. You don't want it loose like that. You want to snug it up. And this, you kind of have to hold and pinch however you can get it. And I'm just going to do a simple chain. Real basic chain. Okay? We're not flipping our work. We're not doing any of that. So now, 
This is all it all this is done is single crochets. And you're gonna take your finger on the hand that you, you hold your hook in, you're gonna hold the loop and you're gonna go in the next stitch but backwards. Normally, if you're right-handed, you're gonna crochet right to left. If you're left-handed, you go left to right. Well, this is opposite. Whatever you op normally do, the direction you move your stitches in, you're gonna go backwards. That's why they call it a crab stitch. You know, crabs kind of walk sideways or somewhat backwards. So again, we're kind of snug here. You don't want it too snug on the loop, but get it so it doesn't completely flop out of out of your hole. And then the very next stitch, again, we're holding onto the loop with our finger, go into the next stitch, go under, yarn over, and you're still holding on with your index finger. You're still holding the loop. Underneath, yarn over, bring it up, two on the loop, yarn over, and finish it. Do a single crochet. That's all it is. It's a real basic stitch. It's going to take some time getting used to because you're going backwards. Normally, you want you would want to go the direction you normally stitch in. So again, we're holding the loop. Go in. Go under. Yarn, yarn over. Bring it up. And once you bring it up, then you can remove your your finger. Yarn over and bring through two. And that's the same, the exact same motion. It's just a backward single crochet. Again, hold on to the loop, because if not, it's gonna come right off and you're you're gonna lose the stitch. So you're gonna hold on. And this could be worked into any stitch. I happen to be working into double crochets. It could be worked into singles, triples, whatever you want. It could even work into a wave pattern. Again, it's just one st one stitch into each previous stitch. It's super simple. It's kind of basic. You could, it might be, it might be a little difficult to hold on to everything. Also, if you did it to join grannies or any type of panel, when you join grannies, it doesn't have to be specifically grannies. It could be another panel just like this, okay? You could do that, but when you, you would actually hold both grannies, both squares or whatever, together, right sides together, or wrong, actually in this case, probably wrong sides together, and go through both at the same time but when you went to open it up after you've stitched the 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 row, it's probably not going to lay lay flat because this is somewhat of a dense stitch, and you're going and if it does, you're going to have a raised line. Which if that's what you're looking for, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not going to lay perfectly flat. I'm going to keep going until we get to the corner, and then I will show you how to do part of the edge. I'm not going to go around the whole thing. And this isn't going to be the only types of edging we're going to do. Eventually, we're going to get more elaborate. I just wanted to start off with something real simple that you don't have to think about. You, you just hold the, the loop, go into the next stitch. And you're just doing single crochets. You're just working backwards. Tuesday, when we start Granny Week, I will go into some basic ways of joining grannies or any type of panel. Any type of square, rectangle, hexagon, any of that stuff. So I'm coming up to the corner here. And I've got one last stitch that I'm going to go into. And in this last stitch, all of the all of these stitches we've done one. In this stitch, I'm going to do three because you need some extra to round the corner. If I only do one and then round it, 
that corner is going to be curling up and it's going to not going to look good. So in the next in the very next stitch you do one you're increasing. So that's one in the same stitch you're doing two and in the same stitch do one more and do three and you've rounded the corner. You're just doing three of them. And I don't know if this color yarn would be the best to show you on camera. Now when you get to the side, I happen to have done doubles. When anytime you do a border, singles are okay because you're only really gonna have one some small holes on it. But with a double, you got a large hole here. Anytime you do a border, try to avoid going into these open chain hole spaces. The reason is, if you do that and it happens to pull, it's going to make that space bigger and obvious. So the best thing to do is when we go to stitch into it, stitch into these turning chains. So you're going to go into the chain stitch and not into the, the hole formed by the stitch. So you actually go into the, the chain. And you evenly space them out. I can't tell you go into this hole and this one and this stitch and this stitch and that stitch. You just have to eyeball it and evenly space it. If you ha do a couple inches, you're like, that looks horrible. I, these are too close together and these are far apart. Rip it out and continue. So what I'm going to do, we've rounded the corner, and then we're going to go, I'm going to go right into this chain. This was a chain from that row of stitches. I'm going to go into the chain, not into the hole of the stitch. And the same thing, this, you're working backwards. This is where you kind of have to take your time, go into the chain. and do it very carefully. So I've done that. I've, I'm gonna skip this next one because it's too close together. I'm gonna go right about here. Again, there's no right and wrong place to do it. Just don't go into this big hole. And I've done that before in the past. I've gone into that large hole of the side of the stitch and over time, it will pull and tug, and you will definitely see a big gap on the edges of your project. So I go roughly, however evenly spaced I think, so I'm going to go right about into this chain, not, not the very next little chain, I'm going to go into the next one, I'm going to just... Uh, see where I can get them and you do the exact same thing real basic stitch and you do a little bit and you're like okay that kind of looks the same I mean I could have made them a little closer it doesn't look exact but if I wanted to I could rip it out and put a little extra closer together doing the sides is always difficult but again, like I said, don't go into the holes formed by the stitch. Go into the chain that the stitch is made out of. Does that make sense? I'm getting something to drink. Hold on a second. And I hope I wasn't going too fast for anybody who's crocheting along. I didn't tell you all to make a sample ahead of time, but...
you could. So, and then know what you're talking about. If your, your rows are kind of wobbly, to even it up, wherever one, like, let's say these rows were slightly wider than these, you could go in a little further. If that's the case, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't go into the hole. You know how a double crochet or a single or whatever, I would go into the post and maybe this border might not be a good one to do it because it's a very thin border. And that loop didn't really come out right when I stitched that. If it's a more, if it's a thicker, denser, like if you're doing like a double crochet, you could do any stitch actually for a border. If you wanted to go all the way around in double crochets, or if you all want to go around in triples, you could do that. But I would go into the post of the stitch, not into any of the holes. And let's say it's only these first couple rows are like that. Go into the post of those couple and then go into the edge stitch of the rest. Yeah, you could do that too. And with the shell, you kind of do work into the hole a little bit. Play around with it. See if uh, it looks good. If not, rip it out and try it a different way. So that's the crab stitch. Real basic. Nothing... Nothing that's going to make anybody go, oh, I love that. Real simple. Okay. Speaking of shells, we're going to do the shell border stitch, which if you've ever done the shell stitch, it's very, very similar to it. This here is the shell stitch. And this works best. You can do it pretty much on any multiple of stitches, but it works best on rows that are multiples of four plus one, just so it's evenly spaced. You can kind of fudge it on other ones. And again, you're gonna join the same way that you would join any yarn. You can, if you want to do it in the same color, you just would continue. You wouldn't finish off. You do a chain and then start. If you're going to do a different color, you'd finish off and start like starting new. Okay. I recommend if you're going to start, if you're going to do the shell border stitch. Start on an edge right before a corner, about a stitch before that corner that corner spot. So let's say on this opposite corner, here's our corner. I would start right about here. Okay. And what you're going to do. And I gotta refer to that. Okay. So let's pretend, pretend none of the pink is here. That's just to show you what it's gonna look like. Pretend none of the pink is there. And you're gonna come up in the stitch right before the corner. So you're gonna come up in there and you're going to do a, let me double check something. Do you want a chain? Okay. You're going to come up into that stitch and you're going to do a single crochet. Oh, actually, take that back. Take that back. I would recommend coming up two stitches away from the corner. So again, we've got our corner space here, whoops, and about two stitches. And on the edge, you eyeball it, whatever you think roughly what two stitches would, would equal. So we know what two stitches are 
on the row when we're working our rows back and forth, approximately the same distance, come up two stitches. So when you join, you're going to come up, do a chain stitch, and then in that same, because you want to, it's, e I mean, you, you can start on a corner, but it's easier to anchor because on either side of your, sh of your shell, you're going to have an anchor stitch. If you look here in between the actual, the regular side, this is your shell. And on either side, you have a single crochet as an anchor stitch. If you start here in the corner, that's fine. But to make certain everything is evenly spaced, I recommend coming up two stitches before the corner and do an anchor stitch, which basically you're gonna come, you're gonna join your, your new yarn, come up, do a single crochet, and well, you're gonna come up and do a chain. So you join, do your chain, and in that same stitch, do a single which pretend none of this is here, pretend all of that's there, but this stitch here, pretend we joined and we chained one and then that's our single right there, okay? That's our anchor stitch. That's gonna anchor on either side of our shell. Then on the corners, what you're gonna do is you're gonna skip the next stitch and in the very next stitch, which will be your corner stitch, you're going to do seven double crochets all into that hole. The reason you're doing seven is you need enough to round the corner. You're only going to do seven. You could do more. Let's say if you do nine, then in these, along your edges, you'll do seven. You'll have a very ruffly shell. Most shells, usually people do five on the, the sides, and in the corner they do seven. You need a couple extra to get you around that corner. So you're going to do all in that same stitch. That was two. Three. four, five, six, and seven. And when you do that, kind of move them around so they kind of fan out around that corner. Because if you did seven, your last one would be here. And then when you go to anchor it, it's going to pull it and it's going to pucker the corner. So that's why you add a couple, a couple extra to avoid that. And then the pattern is you're going to skip the next stitch, which is roughly in this area. And in the very next stitch, and we're on the side. Working on the side can be a pain, like we've said before. But here is roughly about two stitches over. There's a stitch could fit here and then a stitch is here. So you skip one in the neck, wherever you think the next stitch will be, go into the chain. Again, we're not going into the space that's formed by the chain. You're gonna go into the actual chain and do a single. That is your anchor. So on either side of your fan, you've got a single, whoops. Either side of your fan, you've got a single here that's anchoring. Do I need to change back to black? because this is a lighter yarn. But on either side of the fan, we've got a single that's anchoring, but in between each single and the fan, we're skipping a stitch. Because if you put a single in there, it's gonna get bunched up way too much. So we've done our anchor, which is a single crochet. And again, if I'm going too fast and all you're doing 
We're not working on to the outside of this. Another thing with borders, whatever border you do, if this is your finished size of your, your project, let me zoom out a bit. If this is your finished size, you could go around with singles or doubles or half doubles or whatever you want around a couple times and then at the very end of that, do your decorative border that you're not going to work into. Or you could do this, this all the way around, and then when you got back to here, you could do another row of shells on top of it. You could build borders on top of borders on top of borders. There's no wrong or right way to do any of it. So back to this, we've got our anchor stitch. Let me zoom back in. Got our anchor stitch. Now we're gonna skip one stitch space or where one stitch would physically fit in there, which is roughly here. And then go into where the next one would roughly, you gotta eyeball it. And in that, you're gonna do five doubles and go into the chain not the hole. can be a pain because you're going into that chain, but it's going to look a whole lot better when you're done. So that's where one stitch will go. We're going to skip it. The next one's going to go roughly in here. So we're going to do five. This is kind of like the other day when we did the arcade stitch. We did five doubles in one area. And it, that forms a shell or a fan. Shell stitch is a very common border. Pretty much one of the most common borders. So we've done our fan. Our five into that stitch. You're going to skip one. And where the next one will be. Again, we're doing it on the side. So we're going to have to eyeball it. There's roughly where one would be here. We'll do another one here. And then after we skipped one, in the next one, we're going to do a single because that anchors that fan into place. And that's all there is to it. When you get to the end here, if you don't have the same amount of spacing when you get to the corner and you're like, oh, there's like where two stitches could go and you got to skip, fudge it. Just put an extra one in there, or even do a slip stitch or something. Whatever you can get. No one's going to know. So again, we've done an anchor. Skip where one stitch would go, and the second one would probably go right about here. And into that chain. That chain, not chain space. Into the chain. Do five. After you do five, skip where one would be and where the next one would be. Do a single. You can always take your fan that you made and lay it out and be like, okay, we're going to skip here. We're going to go into here. It's where the fan is going to lay if you want it to be flat. Yeah, but you can always fudge it because, again, like I said, this works best on... This was the actual row counts we were counting. This works best. You figure out the math. On that edge and the opposite edge works best on a multiple of 4 plus 1. So, like, 13. 13 is a multiple of 4 plus 1. 12 is a multiple of, of 4, and then one more. But this distance, even though there's not the same amount of stitches, might not equal the same thing. So it'll work on both sides. You get down, you might get lucky, you might not. So if you have to pop in 
an extra single um, or even one fan, the very end fan, instead of five on this side, pop in six. Just something to get you through that corner so your corners are going to look a little more neater. You're going to obviously see more of a difference. Yeah, it depends on how many rows are done, yes. You'll see a, a difference more in the corner because there's a lot going on there. Then if I, if I put an extra stitch in a fan, you're not going to see it as much. In the grand scheme of things, who cares? It doesn't matter if it looks slightly off. But if you want it to be perfect and you want to get everything to fit, that's what I would recommend. So again, you just complete the pattern all the way around. So I'm going to do a couple more. So I'm going to skip here, go into the next, and again, this is doubles, where I think the next one should go, and we'll do five. Does that make sense to everybody, what I've said so far? Um, no, the zipper stitch, I think it's a multiple of two. Not how many chains you did originally, how many stitches. So like when I did, did mine, I did 401 chains, because I'm extra wide blanket, and that first... That first chain counts as a turning chain, so that I would end up having 400 stitches, even though you're doing single chain, single chain, single chain, single chain. So that would be 400. Again, this is just a guideline for borders. It works best with that if you don't have a. a if it's not a multiple of four plus one, you could still do it. You could also, not necessarily the crab stitch, what you could do, I'm just gonna do a single here to anchor it. What you could do to mix it up, if you find another simple, somewhat simple border stitch, instead of a fan or shell, we're going to go to the shell, but instead of a shell, a single, and a shell, you could do a shell, a single, and then a smaller, narrower decorative stitch, like a pico or something, and then do a single and then another fan. So you can end up putting something in between each fan. And that might help balance it out. Play around with it. See what you can do. Which is going to bring us into our next stitch here in a minute. If we're all good on shells, when you see the actual piece. So when I did this, and I can't remember, I can count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight, nineteen, twenty. This is twenty-one stitches. So twenty-one is a, is multiple of four plus one. Because twenty is a multiple of four plus one extra stitch. So when I did this, when I just did this swatch, I chained, Twenty-three, because I had I wanted twenty-one stitches, and then I had two chains, or you could do three. Some people, some people, when they're going to do doubles, they their turning chain is either two or three. I usually do two. You could do three, whatever you want. So you've got twenty-one chains, 
and then those are going to be actual stitches and then when I did this I did two extra so I did 23 so when I did my doubles crochet I went into the third chain from the hook if you do three chains on your turning chain for your turning chain you would go the fourth in the hook this isn't that big of a deal it's it's not like it's set in stone that you have to have these multiples I just said it's best it works but the math works out best if you do multiple of four plus one where everything will line up evenly across the row yes however many stitches to cross because this this is the piece and then the border we're working on borders today so the borders go into the piece because i didn't show how to make this i mean it's double crochet but everybody who is crocheting along and if they know the basic stitches before we even get to borders you got to learn how to do doubles so yeah it would be how are many stitches in your finished product project okay are we ready for the next stitch because we got two more to go and you could see how i did when i did seven in there these lay kind of flat it lays very flat if not it would curl up if it didn't have enough in the corners It would work. You're going to have. It, it'll it still work if you do a f 40 stitches across. You're going to have to kind of, when you get to the end of the row, you might have to skip an extra stitch or put an extra stitch in to make it all fit in there. And that's a minor thing. If you have to pop in an extra stitch yeah if, if you did 41 the math would work out don't get hung up on how many stitches across it has to be if you end up having 40 stitches and you go to do this you could still make it work again add an extra in increase or decrease no don't be sorry don't be sorry at all. Hey, CGAM. Thanks for the raid. For those of you who do not know what a raid is, a raid is a thing that is a good thing. Move on. Okay, for the rest of the class. A raid is a good thing. So somebody who's streaming, that when they get done their stream, they send a raid to another person who's streaming currently, and they bring, oh, you're welcome, Seagam. They bring anybody who was watching on their stream over to another stream. So you can get more viewers. So thank you for the raid. Anybody who's new, who's coming from Seagam's stream, I'm the Crafty Cub. Welcome. And I primarily do crochet, but I have done other craft things on the channel. And we are learning how to do some edge stitches. If you like what you see, stick around. I also upload all of my streams to YouTube, which is in the description below. So I've got, I don't know how many previous streams on YouTube on there. I don't bully you. I do it jokingly. And you do it to me too. <laughs> Oh, so I've got I've got two of my mods in here, Clay Miko and Seagam.
Plain Miko has said that when the two of you are in here, you guys are sword fighting because you both are mods and you've got the sword icon. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go move on to what is called the Pico Stitch. And I don't know how well... And if I need to switch to the black background... Hey, 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 Cinderella. God, now I got her doing that. Let me move my little notepad. My little... So this is the Pico Stitch. And... Okay, let's see. That act, is that I think that shows up better on the black, right? Because it's a lighter blue. I don't sew and knit. I crochet. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. So does it yeah, this shows up a lot better. So this is the Pico stitch, and it it does this. It makes this little decorative edge you could like i was saying earlier you can incorporate this with the shell stitch you could do a shell then a pico in between or when we get to a little later you could do a decorative shell that has a pico on it so pico stitch you could do picos in other things besides borders if you're doing a lot of lacy stuff <laughs> <laughs> yes, Pico de Gallo. Yeah, he was playing GTA earlier, and I was picking on his driving skills. Not that I have any experience, but yeah, he was running. But you're supposed to do that in that game, running over and causing accidents and do all that stuff. So the Pico stitch works best on a multiple, an even number of stitches, not chains, even number of stitches. And this happens, I think, about 20. It's a real simple stitch. Again, join like you norm normally do. And you're going to come up wherever you join. This one, you could start in the corner. And you could do the corners however you want. I ended up starting on the end of the row here. And work it to the corner and I didn't do one see how they kind of stick out I didn't do one sticking out into the corner all of mine are parallel or perpendicular to the edges I didn't have a diagonal one you can put it in there diagonally that's up to you however you want want to do it but this is a really easy stitch to do and you're going to join however you're going to join, or if you're going to use the existing color, you're going to um, do a single crochet. Well, you're going to, if you're joining with a new color, join with, with a chain and then do a single crochet into that space. If using the same color, again, once you finish the row, chain one and then do a single crochet into that space. And then... Then in the very next stitch, do a single crochet. Okay? Forget all the rest of it's here. Pretend this is our very first stitch. We came, we started here with a single crochet, and then we do another single crochet next door to it. Just like normal crochet, normal singles, basic, basic, basic. And then Mexican sounds good. So after you've done two single crochets, one in stitches next to each other, you're going to chain three. And then in the top of the single crochet, again, if I'm going too fast, let me know. So when we started, again, ignore anything to the, to the right. We started with a single here, we did another single, and then we chain three. After we chain those three into the top of 
that single that single crochet we just did sleeping you can sleep in class you can lurk in the top of that single that we just did that's right here go into like you know how the top makes a V go in there and then you can go into the top and then even on the post go in and do a slip stitch and then repeat the pattern on a daily basis okay. oh that's okay so that's all it is so now you go into the where the next stitch would go do a single and then the neck then make a single right next to it however you can get it wherever the next stitch would fit and I'm trying to find a place to do it because I'm working on the side and not the ends of it which that can be difficult so do two in a row two singles and then chain three and then slip stitch into the top of that single you just made I usually go into this is the let me see if I can show it that oops that's the single I just made so when I'm gonna slip stitch I'm gonna go under the front loop of the stitch and then in the under the front bar of the stitch or however you can get it in there some people do it into the chain right above it anywhere close in that area and you do a little slip stitch and that forms these little Picos, that's what they're called. And you just continue. So now you do the next one. The next one's going to be a regular single. Well, that didn't work right because that just went through one part of it. Working into the sides of the edges is not fun. So I did a single and then the next, next stitch area we're going to do another single and then we're going to chain three and then slip stitch into the top of that single we just did that's all there is to a pico a pico is you're making a bunch of chains usually three and then slip stitching on top of that stitch so they sit up on top of it You'll find them on a lot of different types of laces within the pattern, not necessarily the edge, will have a pico in it. And, one, two, three. and real quick, I'm going to show you something. Let me get this. I have this over here to the side. See here. That one. Happen to have these close at hand, and this is on a much, much smaller level. And I'm not going to demonstrate these on stream because my eyesight is not what it used to be. So, years ago, I made these snowflake ornaments, and I know it's kind of blurry. And this is done with really thin cotton and a steel hook. But you see these ends here that these little bumps. You did X amount of chains, and then you did a pico into the chain, and then you did another pico and another pico, and yeah, and then you continue. You can't see the stitch definition here because my camera doesn't zoom in. Oh, it, it kind of works a little bit. But that's what these are. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Those little things, those little things on the end those are the picos oh we have oh it's meme time okay I was wondering when that was gonna happen so we're gonna take a little break from the pico knock something over hold on oops I knocked something over technical difficulties technical difficulties 
and knocked over our prep work for Tuesday. Okay. I'm not looking at it yet. So this is our our meme ahem. It's pronounced yarn goddess, not hoarder. That's funny. <laughs> well, I would be a god. <laughs> and it's true, we're not hoarding. Thank you, uh, Sunder the Rilla, for our our meme of the night. And anybody new who's watching, welcome. And if anybody who is lurking or new, um, if you've exper if you've had any experience in crochet or any other crafts, um, feel free to chat to uh, give some input if they if you've worked with picos or any other type of edgings I do take suggestions for um, things on stream down below in I think it's in the about section here there is a suggestion box feel free to add to it and I would take, I'll take your suggestions into consideration. The other day, somebody suggested the Nifty Knitters, which that is on the list. It's not going to be this week, this coming week. Wait, do I have that on? Yeah, I don't have it in the calendar yet, but it will be coming up. Probably sometime in March, I'm thinking. So I'm going to go to the edge, and I'll show you how I did the edge. And this is just a simple, very simple edging. So you do, oh, I did too many singles. I did four singles, which you could do that. If you wanted, you could do four singles and then a pico. You can space them out. I wouldn't do a pico in every one because they would just all bunch up to each other. So I've done, there's my two, and then I'm going to chain three. And then it basically that chain, when I slip stitch it, it's going to double back on itself to make that little bump. Does that make any sense, everybody? So single single and then we're going to chain three i guess you could chain more than three you're going to have a bigger pika that's going to pop up i wouldn't do anything less because you're not really going to see it Ew. And again, the whole time I'm working into the chains of the edge, the chain, the turning chains of the edge, not into the holes that are that are formed from the stitches, because I don't want it to pull and because even the act of stitching it will pull it a bit. So there's our two, and then we're going to chain three, and then we're going to pico. I mean, we're going to slip stitch to form the pico. And that's the slip stitch. I'm getting close to the edge. And here's an example that it didn't work out because I can put a, a stitch here, a stitch here, and then I have the corner. So you know what? In this case, I'm gonna do a stitch and I'm gonna do a slip stitch and then do a stitch into the corner. That's one. If I have one too many, I can do a slip stitch to do a decrease. So there's one, and now I'm going to do a slip stitch for the next one, and then in the corner, I'll do one. So that's a single, a slip stitch, and then a single. Oops. 
I learned to get it in frame. I did a single, I had one too many st stitches on my edge and I wanted to finish on the corner. So I did a single, the next one I slip stitched and then the following one I did a single. So that will help reduce it. And that just, I didn't plan it that way. That just happens how it worked out as I was going along. So then you're gonna chain. Okay. Oh, take it out and do normal? Okay, so if I do normal, I'm gonna go in the very next, where the next stitch would go. And then the very next one, I'm gonna do our second one. So our repeat is two single stitches next to each other in different stitches. So you're not you're not doing to, you're not doing them together. Not they're not going in the same. So you're gonna do a single and then the next stitch do a single. And then chain three. And then we're gonna slip stitch. there now i'm at the corner i mean i could keep it this way there's no right or wrong way to do it if i keep it this way i'm going to do a single into the corner and that's one way i could do it then i can go in now i then i can turn the corner i would actually add another single to ease it around the corner because you need a little extra stitches in the corner there so that would basically, those two singles are in the corner. And then the next stitch I would do, I would do the Pico on. So if I wanted to, I can still do it this way. Oh, I know what I did. When I originally did my foundation chain, I went into the back bumps or the front bumps. So now I have back bumps to go into. And so it's not gonna look the same because this, this was the foundation chain. I'm gonna go into those back bumps. So then, that right there, in the corner space, I did, I finished the Pico, our, our repeat here, and then I had one space, which is the corner space, and I did two singles into that corner space, and then I've rounded the corner and did one more single here, and now I can do a Pico here. This could work too, if you wanted it this way, Hold on. I, did, I didn't round the corner on the other. Oh, this corner here. This corner, let me see what I did. This other one, what I ended up doing is I did a, a single here and a single in the corner. Then I did a pico. And then after I did my pico, and then in the same corner space, in the same stitch of the corner, I did a single on this side and then a pico. It doesn't really matter. And if you, if you wanted, if I wanted to, in that corner, I could do a single. Yeah, I don't know if I can get it all in frame because it's so small. And if I zoom out, you may or may not see it, plus the hook's in the way. It's a slight difference. Kind of say you might have to zoom in if you're on your phone So here when I did this I did a single well, I did my single and a, Then the other the second single and did the Pico and then when I started the next repeat I went into there and then into the next where the next space would be here I Kind of added extra stitch you could do it however you want But you could also, what you could do is in that corner there, do a single, another single, do the pico there, and then the third single for the next. So then that pico would be more at a diagonal coming off the point instead of off the side. So play around with it if you don't like how it looks.
Okay. So take out the few. Okay. I've ended on that last Pico. And that loop is there. So it's coming out of the Pico. So you're going to see that loop. So that's right here at the edge. But I have one more. The corner stitch is here. It's not that big of a difference, that, that big of a deal. Fit it in however you want. If you don't like the look of this, where all of these picots are parallel to the work, you could do it that way, or you could add an extra stitch to make an extra single. Okay, here I've got, and that's the last Pico I did. So I got a, a stitch here, a stitch here, and then I've got a corner. These are all singles. So they're, they're fairly close to each other, and I don't have to worry about extra room. It's not, not a shell, so it's not taking a, it's not a wide repeat. Each, the stitches are pretty narrow. So we got a stitch here and a stitch here. So that's where a single, and then our single with a Pico, and then I have an extra. It's all up to you how you want to how you would want to do it. Again, no right or wrong way. You do it, you keep going, and you're like, oh, that looks a little weird. Let me take it out and then decrease or increase or however you want to get the look that you want. Yeah, corners can be tricky on certain of these of these borders, and you kind of have to fudge it to fit the way you want it to look. Yeah, if you want that, if you want it all to, if you want all the the picos to be parallel. So this pico here, I happen to have right at the edge. If you want the other one right at the edge. Do whatever you need to. Or, if I wanted to, I could have it there at the corner, and then it would be off, probably off by one, where the Pico would be. Again, it's all a matter of your own taste, how you want it to look. Taking out my safety pin and my little tag for my next the last edging of the night the at the the next one is a combination of wait a minute one, shells and picos so are we good with picos for now did you want me to keep going did you want any refreshers on any of the stuff we've done so far I think everything we've done so far is pretty simple and easy. What about Clay Miko? How are you doing over there? I don't know if you're crocheting along or just watching or... We're doing that. Let me take a looky-loo. Okay. I'm just looking and checking that. Oh, okay. To keep going. Okay, we can do that. So I got to kind of pre-plan, figure out where this is going to go. Yeah, they are pretty basic. I didn't want to end up doing something super complicated and be like, wow, like, didn't want you to be overwhelmed. Okay, that P. 
Pico is on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, this is my corner. And this Pico from our previous corner is right, the edge of that Pico is right at that edge. So I'm going to have to have it there too. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to add an extra single crochet in the stitch I just did. And now I can go into the corner and do a pico into that corner to make them line up. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to do another set just so you can see what the finished corner is going to look like. Actually, do another set after that. I'll do one more. Tighten everything up. One, two, and then one, three, and do our last little pico stitch. Hey, uh, Sophie, twenty-two. I'm using um, basic acrylic yarn, and if you're just learning how to do crochet, I would suggest basic acrylic yarn. It's very inexpensive. If you mess up and you end up having a rat's nest and it looks horrible, you're not wasting money. And I would also suggest a light color yarn, like a white, a light blue, a light pink, so you can see the stitches. Also, I would suggest to use a larger hook than what the yarn recommends. If you look at one of my previous streams, which was from last week, and I don't know if it's, it's probably still not on Twitch, um, below in the about section here on my channel there is my okay you got okay um there's my youtube channel all my previous streams is, is on there a couple thanks for the follow oh thank you for the follow um one of my previous streams i did an ex um explaining how to read a yarn label whatever they recommend it's a recommendation it's not set in stone when you're first learning go up a size or two hook Your crochet is going to be open and lacier than what you probably want. But I recommend that so you can see where the stitches are, where, where you're actually putting the hook. Once you get the basics done, down, then um, use an appropriate hook for what, you, what, you, what for the finished result you need. And again, thank you for the follow. And I've done previous streams, they're all on, the, on my YouTube channel, of basically how to do your basic stitches, your chain stitches, your slip, single, double, half double, triple, all of that. And plus, I'm not the only one online that can explain how to do these stitches. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube. So, back to this. Cinderella was asking to see how it would look if I can. It's kind of curling a bit. Yep. <laughs> okay. Granny squares or sore roads? Hmm. I first learned by doing rows, just basic rows back and forth. Some people learn with granny squares. I would try both. And when you're first getting getting into it, if you decide, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't figure this out on one, then try the other. And once you get used to it. And you're comfortable with it then try the other thing the other one 
Um, I I learned first with rows back and forth because with granny squares exactly yeah like Cinderella yeah start with small swatches of rows just to swatch of singles back and forth and then another one of doubles because when you do granny squares you're doing a lot of chains and a lot of doubles you can do other stitches too but a basic granny square are basically those two stitches you're not really learning a single or a half double that's there's pros and cons to it but if you know your, your basic stitches if you know your slip stitch your chain your single your double your triple and your half double those six stitches that's what all other complex stitches stitch patterns and everything are based out of they're all based on those six stitches Hope that answers your question. So that right there, and you can see how they're, the picos are pretty much parallel. Yeah, it, it took me a couple years to get a granny square to be square. And cause if, when I first started, it was all a mess, but some people that's all they ever learned was granny and that's all they know and they're great at it. Okay, so that's our Pico. We're gonna switch over to our fancy shell. And the bigger swatch, let me move that out of the way. Oh, I gotta zoom out with this. This is our fancy shell, mind the tails. Oh, and when you're first learning, don't worry about your tails, tucking them in and getting them all nice and neat. Just focus on trying to figure out where to put the stitches and getting getting into the stitch properly. Don't it, and it's not going to look pretty and perfect the first couple times. My first piece, it was a, supposed to be a square, and I started out, and then it turned into a trapezoid because your tension gets tighter as you go. That's why I rec also recommend I find it difficult trying to stitch into the chain, the foundation chain, if you're doing rows and you got to stitch into the chain. That's the difficult part cuz you're trying to get into that Yeah, you're don't worry about your tension. Your tension will come with time. And your tension is different than someone else's tension. You might be using the exact same yarn, following the exact same pattern with the exact same hook. Your stitches might be tighter or looser than someone else's. So it's not like you're doing something and you stop and I pick up and continue. It's, it'll look, it'll look be the same stitch, but you'll be able to tell that somebody else was, was had took over because everybody, everybody, you're not machines, so everybody stitches differently. Yeah, don't worry about tension. Just learn the process. If you end up splitting the yarn or going a couple extra stitches, just go with it. Just try to get the feel of it and try learning how to hold the hook and how to hold hold the yarn with everything else that will come with time. So we've got the fancy edging stitch. Um, this stitch works best in multiples of six plus one because of the fans and how they're spaced out. Again, doesn't have to be six, mul that exact multiple, but the math works out the best that way. So again, you're going to start wherever you're going to start. I happen to start, happen to have started on this corner here and went across and I end up having my corner like this. There's other ways you could do it where you have your, yes, you're going to do a lot of frogging too. Good, good point, Cinderella. 
you can start on the corner and you'd have your fan, your shell on a corner, just like the pink one here for the regular shell stitch. If you wanted to, you can have this here on the corner. I just happen to have started right on the edge. So, actually, what I'm going to end up doing with this, I need to get another thing of yarn. I'm going to frog the Pico that we just did. Because I'm going to use the, the blue on the other side. Okay. And what I just did, that if you're new to crochet, that's frogging. You're ripping out your stitches. They call it frogging because you're ripping. Sounds like ribbit. Like frogs make, make the sound ribbit. Okay. So... I'm just going to start new with a new color. And I'm going to start in the exact same end like I used to. And this would be a good, um, I know you're not anywhere near this point of joining another color probably. If you're just starting with crochet, with single crochet. But, and I don't expect you to follow this along with me. But just to uh, get an idea of how to join, and this could be another color. There's different ways of joining. This I've already finished it, so I'm doing an edging. This is a common way to join edgings. You're going to go into the stitch, and with this with this specific specific stitch, I'm starting on the corner. I'm not. I'm going to make the exact same thing I have at this end, at the other end. I'm not going to make a it's not going to curve around the corner. So I'm going to go put my hook right into my finished work, into the into the stitch. And I'm going to loop my new color. Let me zoom. Whoa, not that far. Zoom in and bring up through the stitch. You're going to leave a tail a couple inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a chain stitch. And that's going to kind of lock that in place somewhat. And then in that exact same stitch, I'm going to do a single crochet. So we've come up, done a chain, and then that very same stitch, we'll do a single crochet. We're going to skip two stitches. So right between my thumbs, those are the two stitches we're going to skip. And in the third stitch, we're going to do a double crochet. A chain one. A double crochet, again, all in that same stitch. A chain one so we in that we've skipped two stitches from where we started in the third one we're going to do a double crochet a chain one a double crochet a chain one a double crochet chain three and if I'm going fast for anybody who's following along let me know so that was a lot I just said. I tend to go fast. Sorry. That's good. Yeah. I'm not I I would never say, "Hey, stop what you're doing and learn that you're not anywhere ready for this if you're just learning singles." <laughs> but I know some of my other viewers, like Cinderella, she usually crochets along. But I'm not certain if she's doing that tonight. Again, to recap, we've come up in the stitch. 
did a chain to secure that the join and in that same stitch we did a single crochet we're skipping two stitches and in the third one we're doing a double then a chain a double then a chain and then a double okay yeah I tend to crochet a little fast and I gotta it if you if you happen to tune in on Sundays and I always stream at 8 o'clock Eastern on usually my schedule is Tuesday is Sundays Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays the exception is this Thursday I'm not streaming I'm switching it to Friday but if you happen to tune in on Sundays when I stream I'm not giving instruction it's a long-term project that um, that I'm doing and there's a couple other people in here that are crocheting along doing the same project or a similar project and I'm just stitching I explained how to do the stitch um, beginning of January it's a it's a year-long project and we're just stitching and chatting and so you'll if you tune in on sat on Sundays you'll see some fast stitching so after we've done our chain, our double crochet, we've chained three, and at the top of that we're doing a pico, and we're pretty much halfway done our shell. Now we're going to chain one, and then in that same stitch, do another double. Yes, Sunday's a good night to ask questions. Any night is actually good. It's good to ask questions. So again, we've done a chain, a double crochet, a chain one, a double crochet, a chain one, double crochet, chain three, and then form the pico, a chain one, a double crochet, a chain one, and a final double crochet. So it's kind of like the fan, the shell that we did earlier, but in between each double, there's a chain, and then at the top of the middle double, there's the chain three and a pico. And now what we're going to do is we're going to skip the next two stitches and in the third stitch we're going to do a single crochet. That single crochet is an anchor to hold our fan or our shell in place. And now we continue the pattern. Hey Choo Choo! Yes, the only bad question is the one you didn't ask. Yes, I have to admit, Cinderella is the reason for all of this. <laughs> she taught me how to crochet many years ago, and it's just the way I do, I do it. I just happen to crochet a lot faster than other people. So we 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 have to we have Cinderella, Cinderella to blame. Yes, and welcome, Choo Choo. So to, f to complete our pattern, we're going to skip the next two stitches. And then the third one, we're going to do a double, a chain, a double, a chain, another double, and then after we get our, three do our third double, we're going to chain three. And then we're gonna do a slip stitch to the top of that double, which makes the pico. So we're halfway done our shell. Do a chain, then a double, then a chain, and a final double. And that has finished our shell. And we're gonna skip the next two stitches and then the third stitch Go in and do a single crochet. Just like the shell stitch here, in between each shell, there was a single that anchored it. In between each of these fancy shells, there's a single that, that anchored it. I'm going to go to the edge. So we've anchored it. So now... And that anchor is anchoring that shell, the shell we just did, and it's going to anchor the, the next one we haven't done yet. 
True. Yes. They can be slowed down, in, in, and they're also on YouTube, and you can slow it down. I mean, they are usually two hours long, but you can also, on YouTube, you can play it at half speed. Or if I'm going not fast enough, you can speed it up. <laughs> but if it's live, and you're crocheting along with me, you can't slow me down as I'm live. You can tell me to slow down, and I will, but you can't do it. On your end. <laughs> so again, we're going to skip two stitches. And then the third one is where we're going to do all of our stitches. So we're going to do a double in there. A chain. A second double. A chain. A third double. And then we're going to chain three and slip stitch into the top of that double. That is going to form our little pico. Then we're going to do a chain and then a double, a chain, and our last double. They're all made out of five doubles, and in between each double, there's a chain. And on the top of the middle chain, I mean, the, of the middle double, so the third one will be a pico. And then you skip two stitches and in the third stitch. Yes, this is a fancy a fancy shell. So you're going to skip two stitches and in the third stitch you're going to do a single. So this is a fancy shell. It's not as curved as these. These are more curved because in but the there's no other stitches in between each of these doubles. There are five doubles in a row. And they're all bunched up together, so they're going to form more of a curve. In between each of these doubles, there is a chain. And it's going to form more of a triangular point. But it's still a type of shell. Because all of the doubles are being stitched into the same common st stitch of our main work. They call it fancy because it's got a little, little doodad on the top. So again, we're going to skip two. And in the third one, we're going to do a double. I already yarned, wrapped my yarn. Again, I'm quick like that. So it, yeah, it took me a while to figure it out, but I'm like, oh, okay, they're not that, they're not that difficult. It takes a little, the, the problem I have is, stick, is stitching into the foundation chain. Is when you do your foundation chain, trying to do that first in there, it's like, yeah. And I know there's ways that you can, can help with that, but still, it just drives me. That's, that's the worst part for me. So we've done our double. We're going to do a chain. Do another double. Whoopsies. So let's do that again. Do the second double. Do a chain. Third double, all going to that same stitch. So we've got a third double. Chain three. Slip stitch into the top of the double you just made. And that forms the pico. Do a chain, because there's always a chain between each doubles. Do another double. And I need a little more slack on my yarn. Do a chain and then a fifth double. You can't do you can't you can't work with thread anymore. I'm sorry. Um in black. Black is a difficult color to stitch with on its own, even if it's singles. Even for us uh, quote unquote veterans. So we've done our fancy shell. We're gonna skip two stitches. Again, I hopefully this is zoomed in enough. I've never used a lighted crochet hook before. 
So we're going to skip two stitches, and in the third stitch, we're doing a single crochet to anchor it. So if we look at it, every third stitch, there's there's going to be stitches into it. So we're going to like we back it up here. We did a single crochet to anchor our shells here. We skipped two, and then the third one, we did all of our doubles to form our shell. We skipped two, and then the third one, we did a single to anchor, and so on. So it's every third. Yeah, I've never used a um, lighted crochet hook before. I've seen them. So now we're going to, I'm going to work to the end, and then I'll show you how I turn the corner on these. So we did our anchor, we're gonna skip two, and then the third one, we're gonna do another shell. So we do a double, whoops, popped right on out. Okay. Double, chain, a double, a chain, a double. Whoop, I always end up losing loops off the hook. Then we're going to chain three, slip stitch into the top of the chain, I mean the top of the double, do a chain, do a double, do a chain, and one more double. And now we've come to the end, we're going to skip two, and then the third chain, which happens to be our corner. We're going to do a single. So I finished the edge. And if you're, there's ways that you can apply crochet, not necessarily size four worsted weight yarn. You can do finer yarn and you can apply crochet stuff, crochet work to like a linen tea towel, like a knot, like a woven tea towel. You could just do that as an edging. Obviously not on acrylic yarn, you would probably want a cotton much finer as a decorative edge. And you can do that with with pretty much any of these borders and edges. You could do the scout, uh, a shell, you could do this, you, a pico, but it is usually much finer thread. Now the way I did this over here, yep, let me just double check how I did this. Okay, that's how I did it. So I didn't really have to worry about... Yeah, you could do it that way, yeah. they usually That's usually how it's done. Do the border and then sew it on. There's other ways that you could do it. You can crochet, do it like a basting type stitch and then crochet into that. There's different ways. So that... To round, the way I rounded the corner, since I ended here, I'm not having my shell form the go around the corner, which I could have done that. I've anchored it here, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize where, on the edge, where two stitches would be, one and about two, and then the third one would be about here. And then that is where my next shell is going to start. You just keep going. Oh, I didn't do a chain. Chain, so I did a double, a chain, a double, a chain, a double. Now three chains, and then slip stitch to form a pico, do a chain, and now a double, a chain, and my third double. And then I'm gonna, I usually put it up against the work and to see, okay, well, that's where our single would go and that's the single so you're gonna skip to. And then in the third one, the, again, with the edges, you kind of eyeball where it would go. Again, don't work into the holes formed by the stitches. You wanna go into the chain of the, tur the, the stitch of the turning chain to avoid any pulling and puckering and distortion. 
So yeah, we're gonna go right in there. And you kinda have to fudge it. And if it doesn't look right, and that did not look right because I think I didn't I didn't do that one all correctly. And the good thing about crochet, if you make a mistake, you can frog it out and go again. That goes for, um, it's a good tip for Sophie 22. You end up and you're like, oh, I made a mistake. You rip it all out, start again, and you haven't ruined anything. Okay. Yep, rip it, rip it. <laughs> okay, I don't think I finished with a double. I think I finished with a single. Yeah, because it wasn't really lining up right. And that's how I've rounded the corner. Let me pull my loop out. And I did it this way. Some people might not, not like it. Some people will probably want the fan thing to be on the corner. Again, however you want it. You can kind of fluff it up as you go because it's it's yarn. It's not going to be there permanently, so you can kind of move it around. And that's the fancy shell stitch. Anybody have any questions on the stitches that we've done tonight? And I ripped out the Pico, so I can't really show and the, recap the Pico. Where did I put the other one? Yep. When I teach somebody in person who's never touched a crochet hook in their life, I teach them the chain, and I tell them chain 20 or 30. And I look at it, and I said, okay. I said, hand it to me. I take the hook out, and I rip it all out, and the look on their face is like, what did you do? And I think I did that with Clean Miko. If she's still in here... And I'm like, okay, start over. That's to get you um, used to trying to get your chains to be somewhat of a consistent length. It's, it's helping you learn the tension. Yep, yep. <laughs> after the fourth try, after the fourth try, I'm like, okay, you got it. Yep, Cinderella. Cinderella taught me she did the exact same thing. Yes, yarn barf. Yarn barf is when you get it all messed up or, and I don't, well, I have an, an example here. I'm not going to rip it out. So you got a, a skein of yarn. And for a newbie, you don't got to worry about this. But... Trying to, f I never work from a skein like this. I've got a, a mechanism that will wind it into a cake, okay? And I, it's a center pull, you work from the center. But when you get a new thing here, trying to find where it begins, sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. And this right here, okay? This is a good example. This here, when you can't find it, this is yarn barf. And it will drive you crazy, and it's like, where does it start? Well, you have to keep working through it until you can figure out how to untangle it. That was a really good example. I'll have to fix that later. I hate working out of a skein. Yeah, I have to cake all of mine. If you're first starting, if you don't like working out of a skein... I recommend hand winding it into a ball. Good, that's a very good idea. Very good idea to do a chain, do singles, and then rip it out and do it all over again and just to get the hang of it. And once you get the hang of it, and you're like, okay, that's that's how it, it should flow, and all your stitches look somewhat similar, then once you're comfortable with it, then graduate to one of the other stitches, like a, a double crochet. 
Yeah, that you're you're doing great. If, but yeah, like I was saying, if you don't want to get a, a ball winder, which is a mechanism to do it, you can hand wind it and put it in a basket on the floor or a laundry basket and weave it through the holes in the basket, just so it's not going all over the room and get t getting tangled. Yes, Clay Mako is right, and it will help you with your tension. If what you're doing, you're doing your chain, doing your singles, rip it out, and keep doing it over and over. With practice, it works, it'll help, and you won't even think about it. It'll You're building up muscle memory. And it's like, oh, okay, your hands know what to do. And it's like, oh, you got it. Comes with practice and with time. Okay. Where did I put, oh, I put that one over there. Anybody have any other questions or because I, I don't have anything else to demonstrate tonight. I've shown all of uh, the edgings that I had planned. Um, in the future, I think it's going to be one Saturday a month and I'm either the second or third Saturday of each month, I will show different um, borders or edges. We'll get more complex. And more intricate as we go on, which I gotta. There's a couple I got I'm thinking of, but I gonna have to do some more research on some of the other ones. Um, for those of you who are, who are new, just a little recap br briefly our schedule. Um, Sundays. No, no, I, I, I don't think I would ever want to try to get my master's certification in, in teaching crochet. No, I'm. I'm doing this for fun and to helping people and it's yeah I I don't I don't think I would want to actually go ahead and get that I mean maybe in the future that might be something but as of now um true yeah it's something to think about um like I was saying, a brief recap of my basic schedule. Sundays are temperature blanket. So tomorrow night, if you anybody who happens to tune in, it is an ongoing year-long project. Um, and I could talk more about that tomorrow when we do temperature blanket. If somebody has questions, what it is, if, you, if you're not familiar with the concept. So that's Sundays. And it used to be Sundays and Tuesdays, but I'm changing that. It's only going to be on Sundays now. Tuesdays. I don't really have a specific thing for Tuesdays right now. This coming Tuesday, this coming week, excluding Sunday, is Granny Week. And let me pull up my main chatting menu. Yeah, there's all different types of temperature blankets. Um, so Granny Week, what Granny Week is, with the exception of Sunday, it's going to be... I'm doing it Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday because normally it would have been Thursday. It's nothing but grannies. By the end of the week, you're going to be tired of hearing the word granny and you're going to be tired of the stitch. So, Tuesday, we're going to... I can recap granny regular basic granny squares. For those who... It's like Sophie. Um, if you wanted to learn how to do... A basic granny square I can oh yeah there's over a thousand or more squares you're right yeah if you're if you if you're here on Tuesday evening um I can or anybody who else who's lurking and wants to learn I could go and do a tutorial on regular granny squares I did that a couple weeks ago both clean me go and Cinderella learned, and I've seen examples that it's, their examples are beautiful. And these are real basic. They're none like the ones in my background here. It's nothing complicated, complicated like that. It's real basic. So I can always do that if anybody is interested in learning how, how to do that. I'm going to show how to do a rectangular granny square. 
And I think that's something that definitely Cinderella and Clean Mako are probably going to want to tune in and kind of stitch along. Um, we're also going, to, on that same day, we're also going to um, do Mosaic, or it's also called The Glorious Granny, which I've started a, I can show a little brief, and I don't know how well it's going to show up because they're kind of neutral colors. I'm doing a little test pattern. I'm playing around with colors on how to do it. And this is just the beginning of it. This is only a halfway started block. And we're going to go and do... You really, I don't know if you can really see it because I've used neutrals that are that are close. I should have done contrasting, but it's a basic granny square. And we will do this on Tuesday. And you see here, God, I don't know how well it's showing up. This here and this here, it's real easy. Clay Miko, you can do this. You can definitely do this. If you could do a granny, you could do this. It's got this extra texture. I'll have to make a different swatch with some contrasting colors because that's not really showing it off that well. I'll, have to ri I'll rip out. It's actually front post triples. And it's only worked on part of it. And the, the bigger you get... The bigger it gets, the more intricate it gets. Show a photo. Um, like this. Kind of so you can see some of the stitches. I'll pull up a picture I can find on the internet on the internet in a minute here. That will show it off better. Okay, yes, if you don't have a ball winder, definitely hand wind it. Okay, yeah, she had a purple one that she, again, I don't, we don't, uh, we, wait, I gotta find where it is. Oh, it's in the other thing. I gotta find the other conversation that we had. I gotta scroll up. Give me a second. Um, wait, a purple one? Oh, okay. Okay. Again, this is something we found on the internet. Um, yeah, if it's a really big one, Wind it as much as you can so it's less tangled and keep it in a place where it'll stay, stay, stay clean so you don't pick up lint or dust or anything. Um, okay, this is, again, this is something we, that we found on the internet. We don't have rights, we don't, we, it's not something that we made. But those are blocks of Mosaic Granny. And it looks really, really cool. And all it is, the center is one color, and then it transits to another color and another. But you're not doing, you're not getting specific yarn that, that does that. You are choosing white yarn, and then a light purple, and then a darker purple. You're using three different colors of yarn to make that effect. This is not using any variegated color changing yarn. This is using solid color yarn that you have and coming up with it's how you put it together and you stitch it and it it overlaps yep every two rounds you switch color yeah it's really pretty but oops um that's not what i wanted <laughs> i didn't want to show my facebook um we'll do that on tuesday in addition to that, a lot of things are going to be happening on Tuesday. And if it's too much to fit into Tuesday, I can always... Tuesday. We're doing... If anybody needs a lesson on regular grannies, I could do it. 
We're going to do rectangular grannies. We're doing mosaic or glorious granny. And then also on Tuesday, I'm going to show how to join squares. Not just granny squares, but any type of pieces. So even if it's just this, if, if we got an edge and all, how to join them together. It works better with, with usually with granny squares, but it could be done with any finished edge. Not necessarily, well, you could do it with a raw edge like this, but it works better with a simple, like an ed, like a, a border, like this blue border, a simple border. So that's for Tuesday. That's the beginning of, of granny week. Friday, which normally would be our Thursday, but Friday is our, st our Stitch Dictionary Day of the Week. And those of you that are new, every Thursday we do Stitch Dictionary. Again, this week it's on Friday. We're doing Granny Rose, which I have a an example of Granny Rose, meaning the Granny Stitch, but rows back and forth, back and forth. And that right there is Granny Stitch done in the row. And this is super, super, super easy. Very easy. The other thing we're going to do is the Tunisian granny, granny Stitch, which I don't have an example of yet. And those of you who are new to crochet, Tunisian crochet is a whole nother, nother world. It uses a specific type hook that's more advanced. Again, if that's not something you're interested in, I wouldn't, especially like Sophie, I wouldn't expect you to, to pick up on Tunisian because you're just still learning regular. So that will be for Friday. And then Saturday, well, Saturday is usually my wild card day. I do whatever, but we're doing another granny stitch and it's the granny chevron and the stitches will be will look like this but they're going to go in a ripple or a zigzag pattern i don't have an example made up yet so by the end of saturday night when we finish the stream you're going to be sick and tired of grannies and i promise the following week we're not doing grannies So that's the that's what's coming up next week. Um, again, thank you everybody who has joined tonight. Thank you for the follow. Uh, again, Sophie. Again, below in the description or the about section or wherever it is, is the link to my YouTube channel. All of my Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Choo Choo. Um, all of my streams are uploaded immediately to YouTube because Twitch only keeps them for about a week or so. So any, you can all go back and watch previous streams. Um, I think that's it. I don't think there's any other things I need to, t to touch on. I've already gave you pr basically a preview of next week. Um, oh, again, if anybody has any suggestions or things that they would want to want to see in the about section, somewhere down below, click on whatever, there is a suggestion box. Feel free to, to suggest some type of, doesn't have to be crochet. We could do some other crafts. I mean, I don't get into the painting. I don't, I don't do... Can I think of something I don't do? I don't, I'm not, I don't have a sewing machine. I'm not, I don't have a setup for that. I mean, I have access to a sewing machine, but I don't have a setup for all of that. We're not doing all, any of that type of thing, but crochet, knitting adjacent, because you don't want to see me knit. Um, well, Grammy's in, Grammy that's in here, she sews. She doesn't stream though. Um, I have a weaving loom, a very small tabletop weaving loom. Um, I've done some floral design, which I'd have to figure out the setup for that. I've done some beading, beadwork, jewelry making. So I'm open to other crafts besides just crochet. I mean, that's pretty much what it's been the past two months. And that's usually, that's my go-to craft. So... 
Again, open to su suggestions for other things. Uh, I don't know about paper. I don't really like messy, goopy type crafts. If it's a glue, hot glue, I'm okay with a hot glue gun. I'm okay with the glue stick. But I don't like all that mess. <laughs> if it's yarn, like yarn snippets, I'm okay with yarn snippets. Little pieces of fuzz. <laughs> yes, I cross stitch. I don't know how well and enjoyable that's going to be. And I, I do have a tabletop frame cross stitch frame that will sit on a tabletop that I could do top down that would probably be more of a sit back and chill relax type thing I don't think I'm gonna be into teaching you embroidery stitches macrame I, I have done macrame <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna get get into how to do certain types of of embroidery stitches. I mean, I know some of them, and now that's. I'm gonna stick with instruction of crochet. Other things are more chill stuff. So on that note, I think I'm gonna end the stream. It's been actually over two hours. Oh, French. Yes, I remember. You can't do French knots. Um. Again, thank you everybody, and hope to see you tomorrow or next week or whenever whenever you can tune in everybody have a good night and happy crafting <laughs>